Oh boy, oh boy, it's going to be a beautiful day on a Friday. I can't wait to shoot outside with my two best friends. You better be excited for the Assassin's Creed movie because it's going to be a milestone film that proves that video game movies can actually be good, according to the people making the movie. The people making the movie chatted to Microsoft's Major Nelson about how great the movie's gonna be, where lead actor Michael Fassbender dropped in gems like on screen is a different experience. And as a gamer, you go into this world and it's your world. In this film, we're presenting a universe and you're somewhat of a passenger. I mean, you're not wrong, that is how movies work. Fassbender has not only grasped the difference between movies and games though, he also did 95% of his own stunts in the film, which is pretty sweet. Unfortunately, that 5% he didn't do does include the 120 foot leap of faith scene, which was performed by a stuntman. Haystack landing pads are yet to be confirmed at this stage. Fassbender is already signed on for multiple sequels, but you can catch the first Assassin's Creed movie on December 21. This week, tactical multiplayer shooter fans found their stocking stuffed early when Ubisoft released their latest mid-season reinforcement patch for Rainbow Six Siege. Everyone's favourite Russian Tachanka has been rebalanced and updated after Ubi noticed he had the lowest pick rate of any character. They discovered the trade-off between his turret's stopping power and his lack of mobility led to attackers having several ways to take him out. The update adds a shield to Tachanka's turret to protect him from headshots in the direction he's facing and all shield operators will now have directional explosion resistance. There's also a bunch of changes to operators, weapon rebalances, bug fixes, and the addition of the Bartlett University map to PvP modes. Previously only available as part of the PvE situations and terrorist hunt, the devs have redesigned the map for PvP by removing all the gas and PvE elements, implementing better two-layer destruction, and improving the visual layout for better orientation. For all the details on what's new in Rainbow Six Siege, check out our story on GameSpot. Christmas is cancelled because everyone's playing the new Overwatch update. Called Winter Wonderland, this new event once again replaces the standard loot boxes, giving you the chance to get at least one new Christmas item. There are a ton of new voice lines, emotes, poses, highlight intros, and of course the skins. The f***ing skins! Torbjorn is Santa! Winston finally gets a good legendary! And look at this Zenyatta Nutcracker one! The update also gives Hanamura and King's Row a winter makeover and introduces a new brawl called May's Snowball Offensive. It's a single elimination on Ica Point, Antarctica. Everyone is May, and everyone can only shoot one snowball before having to find more snow to reload. And it's actually pretty intense fun. Winter Wonderland will be live until January 2nd next year. And in your weekly dose of cringe, Nintendo tried to run a Pokemon Sun and Moon challenge and it did not go well. I'm talking a massive flop. So the plan was to organize a worldwide challenge for every Sun and Moon player. Sweet idea, no problem so far. The event began in November and challenged players to collectively catch 100 million Pokemon across the two games. 100 million, wow, that seems like a big number. Did they research that to check they had the engagement levels to achieve that sort of thing? It seems not. To put it plainly, players did not catch them all, they did not even catch most. While the English blog post about the event simply said that the 100 million goal was just missed, the Japanese announcement pointed out that trainers worldwide managed to catch just 16.5 million Pokemon. So that's less than 100 million. Beating the challenge would have rewarded every participant with 100 festival coins. As a consolation prize, they all received 100 crummy regular coins. Oh well. It is now time for the patch notes part of our show. This week we take a look at Battlefield 1. This week, Battlefield 1 got a major update and its first free map, Giant's Shadow. Here's what's changed. Set in the shadow of a giant crashed airship, the map takes place in the Battle of Cell in 1918. This map's behemoth is the armored train. Choo choo! Spectator mode. You can now watch your friends get shot by a sniper from across the map. New custom game mode that only lets you use standard issue rifles. Movement and aim assist has been updated for all soldiers. Vehicle deployment and balancing has also been updated. Oh man, so have weapons. And gadgets. And finally, there's a bunch of stability, UI, and audio fixes. You can check out GameSpot.com for the full list of updates. Do you remember we're just four days away from our live stream countdown of GameSpot's top five games of the year? You can catch it on December 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific, so come by to find out our favorite games of the year, tell us yours, and potentially grab yourself some prizes. And that is it from the Australian team for GS News this year. The US will be taking care of you next week. But be sure to have yourselves a lovely holiday break. Eat a lot of food, play a lot of games, and we will see you in the new year.